multiply. Let's find 32 times 3. First, multiply the 1s by 3. 2 1s times 3 equals 6 1s. Next, multiply the 10s by 3. 3 10s times 3 equals 9 10s. 32 times 3 equals 96. Let's find 21 times 4. First, multiply the 1s by 4. 1 1 times 4 equals 4 1s. Next, multiply the 10s by 4. 2 tens times 4 equals 8 tens. 21 times 4 equals 84. Let's find 233 times 3. First, multiply the 1s by 3. 3 1s times 3 equals 9 1s. Next, multiply the tens by 3. 3 tens times 3 equals 9 tens. Finally, multiply the hundreds by 3. 2 hundreds times 3 equals 6 hundreds. 233 times 3 equals 699. Let's find 341 times 2. First, multiply the 1s by 2. 1 1 times 2 equals 2 1. Next, multiply the 10s by 2. 4 10s times 2 equals 8 tens. Finally, multiply the 100s by 2. 3 hundreds times 2 equals 6 hundreds. 341 times 2 equals 682. Today we will learn how to multiply a 3-digit number by a 1-digit number. Let's have a look at small numbers where you don't need to carry over a digit. How to multiply 341 by 2? The multiplication sign will do the explaining. Hi, I am the multiplication sign. Let me teach you how to multiply 341 by 2. Now we can start solving using the short way method. First, multiply the ones with the one digit number and write the answer below the ones column. Then multiply the tens with the one digit number and write the answer below the tens column. Lastly, multiply the hundreds with the one digit number and Write the answer below the hundreds column. So, the answer comes out to be 682. So, Amber and Precious, I hope you have both understood things very clearly. Oh, yes, but... <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> hey! Now this lesson, we're looking at multiplying whole numbers by 10, 100 and 1000. Very easy concept here. The rule is, when multiplying whole numbers by 10, 100 or 1000, we simply rewrite the number and put some extra zeros at the end. Hmm, well that seems to be pretty easy. This is the rule. If we times by 10, if we multiply by 10, we're going to write one zero at the end. If we times by 100, we simply write two zeros at the end. And if we multiply or times by a thousand, we're going to write three zeros at the end. Let's see how that all works. Let's look at some examples. Part A, 43 times 10. Well, let's start with the 43. Now we're timesing by 10. Okay, let's look it up our rule. If we times by 10, we simply write one zero at the end. So in the end there, we're just going to write one zero. So our answer there is 430. Easy, very easy. Part B, 28 times 100. So let's write our 28 down. Now we're multiplying by 100. So looking up at our little rule there, we're going to write two zeros at the end. So at the end there, let's write two zeros. So our answer there, 2,800. It's a very easy lesson, this one, isn't it? The next one, 3 times 1,000. Well, you might already know the answer to that, but let's see how the rule works. Let's write the 3 down, and we're multiplying by 1,000, so we're going to write 3 zeros at the end. So at the end there, 1, 2, 3. Write 3 zeros there, so our answer there is 3,000. Okay, you probably already knew the answer before we did that. Question D, 725 times 10. So let's write our 725 firstly. We're multiplying by 10. So let's see, when we times by 10, we write one zero at the end. So let's write that in there. And our answer then, 7,250. Our next one, 61 times 1,000. Well, let's write our 61 down. Now we're multiplying by 1,000. Okay, there's the multiplication by 1,000, times by 1,000. We write three zeros at the end. So there we have it, one, two, three zeros. 
And our answer there, 61,000. Our final question here, 596 times 100. Well, let's write the 596 down firstly. We're timesing by 100. So in this case, we write two zeros at the end. So at the end there, simply write our two zeros. And here is our number now, 59,600. So let's write that down, leaving a little space between the 59 and the 600. Excellent. Well, that concludes the lesson. Good luck with your questions.